All right, Reagan. Let's get to the Dallas Cowboys and wrap this thing up. Ten and a half win total for the Dallas Cowboys this year. A lot of losses, not a lot of ads. They lost Dorrance Armstrong to the Commanders. Stephon Gilmore still unsigned. Tyler Biadas to the Commanders. Tony Pollard, Tennessee. Tyron Smith, the Jets. Leighton Vander Esch, no longer on a roster. And Michael Gallup. Key ads, Eric Kendricks at linebacker and Zeke. So they lost a lot of guys from a really good roster. They've won 12 games three years in a row. Their win total is 10 and a half. Can they get to 12 again, Reagan? Yeah, I got them going 12 and five, dude. I, I was talking about it before. I do not care with all those losses, man. Like, they're just going to fucking beat up on those bad teams. They always do. And, yeah, they'll lose a few games. Like, I'm sure Philly will beat the shit out of them. And when they play the 49ers, they'll beat the shit out of them. But to me, they just handle their business. Like, they're actually one of the most, like, they're, they, they're not fluky at all when it comes to the games they should win. Like, they rarely choke those games. It's just always, like, when everyone's, like, hyping them up too much. And it's like, oh, I don't know. Dallas might be different this year. They're not. No, but, Reagan, um, I agree with you, man. Like, you look at their splits against non-playoff teams and playoff teams, even in the regular season, and playoff teams are below 500. Against non-playoff teams, they win, like, 80% of the time. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, no. And they fucking kill them. It's like you're watching Red Zone. It's like Chris Hansen. Uh, or no, Scott Hansen. No, yeah, yeah, Scott Which Hansen. One? Chris, Chris Hansen's Chris... like the to catch a predator guy, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he wrestles up them pedos. Um, but no, uh, uh, Scott Hansen, you see him going nuts because Duran Bland just got a pick six to make it 41 to 10 Dallas. So it just seems like they just keep pouring it on him always. Uh, I talked about it before. I'm super excited for Zeke. I think he's a guy that I am would be targeting late in fantasy drafts. Definitely a guy to look for in best ball uh, and weekly lineups. I mean, I think he's going to be a cheap option guy. So I'm um, excited for CD. I mean, he's definitely a guy would, I would take a first-round pick on. I think he's going to, as long as he stays healthy, he should have as good of a season, if not better. Jake Ferguson should end up as a top-five tight end. I mean, the line's a little shaky right now. But, I mean, yeah, they lost Tyron Smith. But it's not like he's been – he's played a full season – ever or if he has it hasn't been in a long time i mean he's been yeah. injured for dallas pretty much every season over the past couple of years i mean dax obviously coming off the best uh year of his career i mean 36 touchdowns to nine interceptions a four to one touchdown to interception ratio is just ridiculous i mean if lamar in, didn't have the ravens as a one seed and maybe they were a two seed dak may have won the mvp i mean he had a phenomenal year last year so i think he's going to still continue to have a great year. I mean, I don't think Tony Pollard's a big loss at all. I actually think Zeke's an upgrade at this point, which is no, he's saying not, much. dude. No, he's dude, Tony not. Pollard was terrible last year. Stop Tony it. Pollard was better than him in the same offense two years ago. Mm, let's rebuttal. Pollard wasn't let's good rebuttal. last year. But Zeke's let's not. rebuttal because he's Zeke Pollard was, was so injured. Much better than and then tall, yeah, so Pollard much better. was good when Zeke wore down the defenses and he came in as a change of pace back. You know, Bro. the guy couldn't handle the full workload. I can promise you zeke will go for over a thousand yards this year dude pollard barely did it and we have a better metric year. they had together on the same offense in dude 2020. enough with pollard the nerd shit enough with the nerd better. shit enough it's just with the nerd fact. shit. It's just because it was daddy of the giants for years doesn't mean you need to get get your oh panties in a bunch enough with the nerd shit zeke's gonna have a great season this year i'm, I'm not gonna hear it I'm not going to have it, okay? Zeke over five and a half touchdowns better be the words coming out of Drock's mouth later, all right? Like, I'm not going to have it. And the defense I don't, is still I like sick. that, Pat, but I and like that, the defense that, is still sick, dude. Like, Michael Parsons is him. I don't – Armstrong's a huge loss. Like, he was their number two guy in sacks last year. I, think, I believe he had seven and a half. And obviously, you know, if Washington wanted to pay him, he goes with his D.C. Uh, Dan Quinn's obviously another key loss. And I know, obviously, we talked about Washington adding him. Uh, that's a huge loss for the defense. Huge, huge. Um, and I mean, I will say Bland's very overrated. Like casuals will act like he was a stud. Like, yeah, he had a bunch of pick sixes, and it, it is impactful. But I mean, the guy was getting cooked a lot as well, and it'll help getting Diggs back. That'll be a big add back. But agreed, agreed. Um, but Van Der Esch, I mean, it's unfortunate the guy. Uh, re- I I think he retired. I don't actually know if he was unsigned. I'm almost positive he retired, but that's a big yeah, loss. So, so it'll be interesting yeah. to see uh, who fills that hole. I mean, obviously you'd hope Eric Kendricks, but at this point, bro, like he's on the decline. Um, 
Yep. And I believe they uh they drafted, yeah. Oh no, no. I said before the Eagles drafted the Notre Dame linebacker. I meant that Dallas drafted the Notre Dame linebacker in Maris Lafu. So he'll have a chance to fill into that role as yeah, he well. He wasn't good so, though. He wasn't even but good he's still gonna have the chance. I mean, they spent the third round pick on him. I mean, it's a big gaping hole. So he's gonna have those opportunities. And I'm actually really excited for Marshawn Marshawn Nealon out of Western Michigan. He was one of the uh edge rushers I like the most in this draft. So I think he'll actually fill into that number two edge rusher role uh, well. I don't know how much lo- more Lawrence has left. So while he might not be at this year, he's definitely, uh, I think, could be a nice duo and a long-term uh, solution to pair with Parsons for the next couple seasons. I have the Cowboys at 10 and 7 here. I think they regress for sure. They have a lot of star power, but they have a lot of holes in this team. This is the worst offensive line Dak Prescott's ever had in his career. You're relying on Tyler Guyton who they were desperate. That was a need pick, not the best player in the board when they took him at 28, taking Guyton because they lost Tyron Smith. The guy started 14 games in college in the Big 12 and barely had to do pass pro for more than a three-step drop. So I'm really concerned about that, and he has one start at left tackle. You're going to rely on Cooper Beebe, who you took in the third round, to potentially start at guard. I like Tyler Smith, but Terrence Steele was not good last year. He allowed the fifth most sacks from right tackles. Like, he's not that guy. Martin's still good, but he is getting up there in age. So this is the worst offensive line Dax ever had in his career. This is the worst running back room Dax ever had in his career. Outside of CeeDee Lamb and Jake Ferguson, Brandon Cooks was bad last year. He had eight touchdowns, but that's it because a high-scoring offense. But Cooks was actually bad. He's it's, just a, it's just the offense, I think, is due for some regression after last year. Also, they played 11 games. First bottom 12 defenses last year. 11. They played the easiest schedule of defenses. Crazy. This year, it's the 10th easiest schedule is projected. We'll see what happens. But they would just get out big on teams. They would beat up on the cupcakes. And then they get their asses kicked against good teams. Now, crazy stat, Reagan. I saw on Sharp. Crazy. I want you to think about this. They scored 17 or more points in the first half in the middle of the season. Seven games in a row. The only other team to do that in modern NFL history was the 2007 Patriots. Kind of a crazy stat. They'd get out to these big leads, like you mentioned, like you mentioned against these bad teams. They just blow them out in the first half and fucking coast. Uh, Now with Dak's $55 million cap hit, that's why they lost so many players. Obviously, we talked about it. It's his contract year. Jerry Jones says they're all in for 2024. What the hell are they going to do if Dak puts up a similar season, Reagan? Second MVP voting last year, threw for over 4,500 yards, nearly a 70% completion rate. And the biggest thing for him, after throwing so many interceptions in 2022, he barely threw any last year, which was huge for this offense. If he puts up a huge season, what do they do? Does he get $60 million a year? His cap is 55 right now. What if he puts up another top five MVP caliber season? Hey, I mean, I think you have to pay him. I, I definitely think he could be the the quarterback for a Super Bowl winning team. I, I, I don't I, think that. I, I, do. I don't I do. I st- percent do. Statistically speaking, since 2020, which they've been in the playoffs every year, he has been bottom three in every metric. He's been awful in the playoffs. He just chokes under pressure. He's been terrible. So he has I no mean, track I, I record showing us that he can win in the playoffs. And now his roster is worse than it was the previous three seasons. He has no track yeah. record. It's another one and done for me in the playoffs. It's it's tough to let a guy like that walk, though, because it's one thing if he wasn't putting up the numbers in the regular season, but how do you not pay him? I agree. That's the thing. So you got to believe What's in What's their him. other option? There is none. Like, exactly. at least with the Giants, it's like, we, like with the Giants, like, yeah, Daniel Jones got you to the playoffs, but like, he's not going off in the regular season. So it's kind of like, we know he's not the guy where Dak, it's like, he just is doing all of this in the regular season. Like, how do you not pay a guy who goes for, 36 touchdowns and nine interceptions. I mean, that's ridiculous. A four to one touchdown to interception ratio is unheard of. You know, that no, second in MVP, you have to pay him. You yep. have to pay him. I agree. So, they handcuffed themselves, basically. Jerry Jones. And I, done a I poor do job think they're a team that could, I do think they can get to the Super Bowl. Like, maybe not, maybe not this year, but I think they'll no fix shot. the roster. Dude, I mean, I mean, the Eagles no made it a couple years back or two years ago no with Hurts. Like, the NFC is very weak. It's not like he's got to go through the AFC. Things could fall into place. Bro, we just touched on how they can't win in the playoffs, how they are under 500 against winning teams. I understand. The Packers went in their house last year and beat the shit out of them. 
this isn't even a year this year thing. I'm just saying I think I wouldn't be shocked at all. I think you pay Dak. I think eventually he will get them to the Super Bowl. Not this year. Not this year. Let that I be clear. Not this Dak year. I, I think, think you pay him, pay and I think eventually he will get them to the Super Bowl. Do they win it? Probably not, because it would be too funny for them to lose. But, And I think everyone would love to see the Cowboys lose in the Super Bowl. I think that'd be fun for all of America. Yeah, I guess it'd be fun, except we have to listen to Dallas fans talk shit for a good month until the actual Super well, Bowl. Lose. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what, they, their only other alternative, like you're not going to get on the, get a guy in the free agent market. You're, you're going to be drafting too late in the draft to move up and get a guy. Like Trey yeah. Lance... <laughs> Is that your is that your backup plan? Is Trey Lance like I, I don't know. Anyways, to touch on their defense, I don't think they're gonna be able to perform at the level they did under Dan Quinn, just because the way he ran that defense, they forced so many turnovers. They had a double digit turnover margin three straight seasons. The odds that that repeats is highly unlikely. I do like a lot of the pieces of the defense. I mean, don't have to touch on Michael Parsons. He led the league in pressure rate, fourteen sacks. Dog. Bland, nine, nine, eight, nine interceptions, five return for touchdowns. That's not going to repeat. Uh, Osa Digizua in the middle, though. Really good, solid player. 11 run stuffs, three sacks, 13.2% pressure rate, fourth in ESPN's pass rush win rate. Mozzie Smith was bad as a rookie. Everyone thought that was a bad pick. It was a bad pick. You don't take fucking run-stopping defensive tackles in the first round. Demarcus Lawrence, you mentioned it, Reagan. Big step back last year, only four sacks. Uh, you touched on the run, the linebacker room. Demarius Overshone out of Texas towards ACL in the preseason last year as a rookie took him in the third round. He's a monster, like really good physical traits. I wouldn't be shocked if he becomes a number one linebacker. Uh, I think he can have a really good season. Uh, you talked about uh, Trevon Diggs being back huge. Uh, it's just a boomer bust secondary. It's still a good secondary. Donovan Wilson's pretty solid hooker solid. Um, I, I do like the defense more so. Than the offense. I just am worried about the offensive line. I'm worried about Dak without a running game. I'm worried teams are just going to take away CD Lamb and they might struggle. The offensive line is the biggest worry for me here. Losing Dan Quinn is another big worry for me. I have yeah, a 10 and no. 7. They still make Fair. the playoffs, but they get bounced yeah. in the first round. Valid. All right. Your MVP, Dak Prescott. Yeah, it's Dak. It's Come Dak. We, yeah, I mean, we don't have to get as good as Parsons is. It's, it's Dak. And deep boys Parsons for me. I think yeah, you agree. I mean, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. A team is just so top-heavy with their roster, in my opinion. X-Factor for you. Yeah, I mean, it'll probably just be the offensive line because if they can prove that they can create the holes, protect Dak, I mean, Dak's going to like light up some defenses. When he has time, he's going to light it up. And then if they're able to open up holes for Zeke, I think he's going to gash some teams. So it really comes down to the O-line. Yeah, I actually have the O-line too, Reagan. Completely agree with you. Rookie of the year. Hmm, this one's tough. This one's tough, man. This one's tough because, like you said, Guyton's so – like the, there's not a ton on him. You know, he only played – what was it, 14 games you said before? 14 games, one start at left tackle. He does have, like, a really good frame. Like, I think he's a six foot seven, But I don't know. That, that, that the, the physical the tools – Get, the physical tools give you a high ceiling, but I think he's going to struggle out of the out of the gate in his rookie year. Yeah, I mean, I might go with I might go with Cooper Beebe and just the fact that he'll end up winning the center job. And That's centers, I, have, I feel like though. it's a little bit easier to hide the struggles where when you're at the tackle position, like you're the guy that's probably going to be giving up the sack. Like from a casual perspective, like if Beebe's getting destroyed, but they're getting like a lot of run stops in the backfield, like it's going to look a lot worse on Guyton if he struggles than it would BB. So I think, I'll, I think I'll go with BB, but those, to me, those are the only two options. I don't know if anyone else is going to start. No, no one else is going to have really an impact initially. I have BB as well, just because he was a mauler in the run game at K state. I think that's gonna be really important for Dallas this year. And I think Guyton's going to struggle as a rookie like heavily. So I think BB can be solid. I don't know how good he will be in pass pro, but at least he'll, he'll help them in the run game. 